Hello my friends and welcome back, it's episode 20! <clears throat> and uh, I checked all the other, I just quickly checked all the other uh, faction representatives. Only this one has the bug. Deputies! How deputies. are you today? You're my favourite deputies. We do require your services. <clears throat> so this one, uh, this is the only one that has the bug that lets you get infinite reputation. Which results in a 30% rebate. Um, I was interested to see what happens when you max out reputation. You get a 30% discount, including on Identify. So, uh, this is a good opportunity actually to uh, get cheap, cheap Identify. <clears throat> you otherwise don't get anything, you just get the discount. That's it, as far as I am aware. Because... <clears throat> Obviously, in the factions thing, they join you in battle. <clears throat> I am a key part of their faction and history. Apparently, <laughs> for flirting with the representative for uh, for five minutes. So yeah. Anyway, it's it's. Uh, it's time to move on, but it's just funny to see uh, what is a very old school R RPG bug. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Well, that is quite far away. We can buy rations at KLM. I still think that that's several days travel away. All right, let's grab some. Let's grab some food then. That's uh that's very that's actually very far away, so we had better uh load up on supplies. Deputies! <clears throat> Shame she only spells. Uh, she only sells. Only spells? <laughs> she only sells recipes. Old Captain Holdage here. Must feed. Okay, I'll do. <clears throat> In fact, what we should also do while we're here. Uh, I was thinking of dumping my uh, my prime stuff, but then again, I might I might run into a uh, I might run into a recipe or something along those lines where I need one of those to make the weapon. So. Until my party is more powerful and I'm sort of more more comfortable, I try and keep all the tools with me at all times, especially since this game is a bit tricky when it comes to letting you go or letting you leave an area once you've gone there. And we're off. Spectral spiders. Let's kill them. Might as well. Might drop poisons. I can turn into arrows. Round one. Fight. Where are they?
Oh, they're up there. Use stealth. What the hell? The spectral spiders are having a campfire. Okay. That's on me. Ugh, I needed to unencumber this guy. <laughs> Is out for you. It's not every day you roll for disadvantage and uh, still score an excellent hit. Are those two close enough to be shattered? No, and I can't even see anyway. Summon magic missile. Is out for you. Mark two guiding bolt. Let there be light. Wah! <clears throat> they definitely don't like radiant damage, that's for sure. find a rock to hide behind as always. I'm not sure why he's disadvantaged on this shot, but f normal on this shot. Heavily encumbered, okay. Oh, uh, I'm disadvantaged because I'm encumbered, apparently. Which is a very weird reason to be disadvantaged when using a bow. Because, I mean, you just stood there. <laughs> Victory is mine. <laughs> Unless you're literally carrying the stuff in your arms, I don't see how it interferes with you using your bow, but okay. Alright, sweet. 225 EXP is actually quite a lot. Four battles like that and I would level up. That's, uh... They didn't drop anything, which is unfortunate. Of course he's heavily encumbered right now because he's carrying uh, the rations. Those sweet, sweet rations. There's really no way to uh, avoid having at least someone weighed down by the rations. What I will do is I will give this guy the primed short bow to hold on to. And the primed short sword because he can use both of these. I'm not sure why I would particularly want to use them, but at least it makes sense to distribute the load a little bit. But the main issue here, of course, is the weight of the rations. So when you're first setting off on your journey, it's a lot of weight. And I've only got one magic backpack. Everyone else has got a normal backpack. <clears throat> and the reason why I gave it to her is because it's... She's the first person on the list and that seems to matter. So when you pick up items, they end up in her inventory. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Or I should say... One second. 
I should say, when the game picks up items for you, because you're traveling or whatever, it puts them in the first person's inventory a lot of the time. So, that creates a situation where, uh, she can potentially be very encumbered very quickly because of her poor carry weight. Sweet. Stop. The battle axe of acuteness is here. And I had better equip it. Where is it? See? This is what I mean. It's ended up in her inventories. So it's very easy for uh, characters to end up overburdened. And you shall have my plus one X. See, we're already uh, below the heavy encumberment mark. <clears throat> Remember, man, plus one can be huge, it can be absolutely massive. <clears throat> so there's, there's, um, Throughout D&D's history, there have been two systems. There's been AC and there's been, like, reverse AC or Thatco systems. <clears throat> but the basic point with these systems is... <clears throat> say you have an AC of 10. So the idea is, if you roll uh, 10 or less, then you miss... And if you roll 10 or more, uh, 11 or, or higher, then you hit. And that's the idea behind armor class is that armor doesn't reduce damage in any way. What it does is it um, turns aside the hit. It prevents the hit. So armor is a uh, an accuracy modifier, <clears throat> not actual protection. <clears throat> it's protection so much is that it effectively uh, gives you evasion. So when you got that full plate and it's like AC 18 or AC 19, that means that that person needs to roll 18, 19 or 20 to actually score a hit. In that situation, plus one can be enormous. I mean, if you're, if you're uh, AC 19, and then you add plus one, <clears throat> then you're basically mean you're ensuring that you have to roll twenty to actually hit. Uh, speaking of which, depending on the D and D system, um, but I think pretty much all of them. And when I'm talking about D and D systems here, I'm talking about games that have used modified D and D systems as well, not just D and D itself. And no one can know all of the D&D rules for all of the versions of all of the games that have used alternative versions of it. There's just too much stuff out there, but... <clears throat> Normally, if you roll a 20, you hit. That's it. <clears throat> all normal calculations are ignored on a 20. You just... If it's a 20, you, you take the hit full stop. And it will be a critical hit, too, in most cases. Um... In most systems, it will be a critical hit in addition to being a guaranteed hit. And conversely, on a critical miss, <clears throat> you miss no matter what. So if you roll a 1, um, even if your modifiers would enable you to hit, you still miss. So give you an example of that. Say you're not wearing any armor, so you have an armor class of 0. Or maybe an innate armor class, depending on your D&D system. 
and you are, uh, you know, Conan the Barbarian, and you've got 25 strength or whatever, you've got all the best gear that, that your in-game world can afford, and you've got like a plus 10 bonus to your rolls, so the lowest you can roll is 11. That means that you're still going to hit an unarmored person even if you roll a 1, typically. Um, but most D&D systems simply state that if you roll a 1, all of that calculation is ignored, you just miss. Full stop. <clears throat> so, it's, uh... It's almost an interesting catch-all that no matter how amazing you are, you can flub so badly that you will you will you will miss even the weakest, most pathetic enemy in the most obvious situation, and conversely, no matter how terrible your characters are, you can uh, you can potentially uh, roll a twenty and still hit and still do damage, even against a guy walking around in. You know, thrice enchanted friggin' holy machine oils plate. You can roll 20 against space marines and still hit them. Um. There you are. There are you, you ready are. For this? <clears throat> are you ready for this? I am. Any idea how to get up there? One or two? I tried to think of a way, but still, this place is incredible. Rope. Did you notice that there was a minor gate just here in the courtyard? As a matter of fact, I did. Let's get to it, if you don't mind. It's going to be that gate, isn't it? That's going to send you in that tower. Um... Part of the reason why that system is important is, and this is rarely done in D&D, &D, but I'll tell you about it anyway. D&D um, &D was also designed as a potential war simulator, and the only, the only other medium that talks about D&D &D that acknowledges this outside of the nerdiest circles of D&D &D, is a, a comic called Order of the Stick, actually, <laughs> funnily enough. <clears throat> but it's this idea that if you, if you, you could have uh, a huge battle involving hundreds of enemies, uh, you know, a proper protracted, uh, protracted battle of, you know, armies of level one and level two characters. And you know, your heroes might be, uh, they might be level four or five or six by this point. And you know, the point is, is that those, those armies of characters using standard weapons and, and reasonable armor, they can massacre each other because <clears throat> if you have a hundred people rolling, this is a, uh, Basically, how um, how forty k tabletop functions. You have a hundred. You have a hundred soldiers firing a hundred short bows. Then you roll a hundred dice. A a quantity of those dice are going to be twenty, <clears throat> which is going to result in in kills because, as we've seen in D and D. Level 1, level 2 characters have very few HPs. They're very fragile. So, in most most D&D systems. So, effectively, a roll 20 on a, on a big pile of bows or swords or whatever is going to result in, in a kill. And that is how armies of D&D &D characters of, you know, dubious level and, and capability can roll at each other. And it's also potentially how an army can kill a party of heroes. So what you would, you know, what you would potentially do is you have like an army of uh, 40 or 50 guys fighting the party, for example, because they've, they've pissed off a nation state. You will roll... 
Um, you will roll 50. You will roll for 50. Um, usually using the biggest dice. So, um, two 20s and a 10 in this case to get 50. And what that does is you add those numbers together for your 50 characters. And that is the amount of 20s that they rolled. So I roll 2d20s and I get, you know, 3 and then say 11 and then I roll a 1d10 for 50. So that's 14 so far and let's say another 5, so 19. So then we say that 19 out of 50 characters uh, scored a hit of, of varying, you know, because these characters are going to be rubbish. The hits can just be averaged to make uh, to make the math nice and easy. Which is usually not much damage. So, you know, short bow is like one to six, or a long bow is one to eight. So you're going to presume that all these guys have got have got garbage baseline weapons. So it's going to be three damage. So you're going to be taking 19 hits of three damage on your party, and that seems pretty reasonable. 19 hits of three damage spread across this party here, which is level four. Probably want to be level five or six before you start fighting armies. Um, could definitely be taken and mitigated. It can be distributed amongst your characters as you see fit. You can use part of your round to uh, heal your characters in between the damaging <clears throat> to uh, to simulate the war. And then obviously your party will attack back, um, and it will it will almost certainly be that every uh, every hit will be a kill. Um, you can you can model actual army battles in D and D. It is possible to do so, and the system that enables that is the idea that if you roll twenty, you're just guaranteed to hit, because that allows that is what allows an army to bring down um, individuals. <clears throat> because without it, it would be possible to cheese the system by stacking so many buffs that you could never you would never take a hit from a level 1 or a level 2 character ever. You just you just wouldn't be able to roll enough modifiers to pen you. You know, you stick full plate on. You've got an armor class of 18, so you've already reduced the chance to be hit to uh 18, 19 and 20 or uh 19 and 20 depending on your system. So then all you have to do is add a couple of plus ones and you would be in immune to uh, unadjusted attacks. Obviously, other heroes, other monsters, higher level critters have got modifiers, you know, plus four, plus five, plus six, so it would never happen with those, but it is possible for that to happen with level one and level two characters. And so that's why the, uh, the you know, roll 20, get a hit in system is quite clever and quite ingenious. Um, because an army of 50 people, no matter how incompetent, they should be able to bring down heroes no matter how good, if you've got enough of them. And that's what you can simulate, but it's very rarely done. So, uh, yeah, and uh, Order of the Six sort of, you know, <laughs> made a mockery of it with uh, Belthar and on, stood on a pile of, on a pile of bodies screaming, I'm Shula's sexy god of war. Um, <laughs> that's basically how it would go. Right, let's figure out how to get in this tower. Sorry, I'm going on a D&D &D history rant here. I hope you guys don't mind, but you guys wanted me to play an RPG. And uh, it's, it's uh, as a games designer, and, you know, I am actually a, a real games designer. I got my honors degree in game design technology. Um, it's a very interesting system. It, 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 that, that aspect of it is very well thought out. That, you know, what if... Doesn't look like this is the way forward, does it? Although that moss has regrown, so let's just grab that. It's probably for poisons or something like that. What, what if... Um, what if an army faced, you know, the party? Would it be possible to stack, stack bonuses such that, an, uh, you know... 300 blokes could could never hope to defeat one guy. And uh, that's not possible in DD. You can actually simulate that army battle because of that 
guaranteed hit on 20. And the fact that this, the armor system does not reduce damage, it just prevents prevents damage. So it's evasion, effectively. It means that when you, you can get hits, and when you do get hits, they are still going to hurt. So there's, there's no possibility within the system, the extremes of the system actually account for the possibility that you could become invincible. Of course, some games uh, mess it up and you can indeed become invincible, but the baseline D&D system actually understands and acknowledges that point, which is quite good. Find a way into the tower. You might need to fly or something. Where is this tower anyway? Oh, it's up there. Huh. Well, spider climb is not going to work, is it? I don't have a wizard, so uh, flying is not happening. Okay, if I fly up here, can I then misty step? Haha, <laughs> this is jeez! No, 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 no. Don't cancel the levitate, or you'll be coming down to earth big style. Can I now misty step? Ha 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 ha! It worked! Ha <laughs> ha! That's great! How's that for some cheese? Okay, abort levitate. Uh, abort. How the hell do I cancel it? Ah, there we go. Sweet. You can do it with levitate misty step. <laughs> Who needs a wizard anyway? Who needs a wizard when you can you can you can combo some cheese together? <clears throat> Fantastic. It looks like well, another world. You must have seen so much. I have, but this is still fascinating. I mean, it's the inside of a well, castle, for crying out loud. I see where you got your passion for learning. Let's look around. Gather all the antiques we can. Certainly ain't taking the paintings, it would seem. Ah! That lets us get up there, but what does that achieve? Ah! 
an extraordinary job. What are the odds that this area has also got enemies somewhere? Hmm. Now that I think about it. This poor guy is a container. Click to loot this container. Oh, a magnificent longbow. Sweet. Well, there's an upgrade. from your support here. Well, there's a chest on the other side of the wall. Let's hand over the longbow. <clears throat> As I said before, with D&D, &D, plus one is huge. It's always huge, so... Okay. I think this rogue has been carrying my uh, party on its back for most of the game. It remains to be seen as to whether he'll still be the most powerful, most useful character as we level up. But, uh... The cunning action is just so useful. Being able to use an item or hide or whatever. Corrosive arrow. 1d6 acid, save for half. That sort of feels inferior to a standard. A standard arrow. No, I, I mean, actually, it's, it's just pure extra damage, isn't it? Because the actual main damage comes off the bow. I don't know. I was having a senior moment there. Right, let's... Um, just check crafting and see what those arrows are. Okay, some of the junk that we're hauling around... is useful for these. Craft away. By all the gods. All the gods. This is really <coughs> something. It explains the library we found down in the caves. Place seems dangerous. Definitely. Be ready for a fight. Wait, you you know me. I don't fight. You know me. I don't fight. Uh, you probably want to just sit there, dude. Doesn't look like he has any spells or combat capabilities at all. Oh, 
I'm like, be ready for a fight. Why? I don't see anything. What did you see that I don't see? Almost heard a Geiger counter sound there. Oh! Skeletons. Very hard to rotate the camera. How tiresome. Okay, these guys are not really any threat. We've, uh, uh, you know, during my little uh, grind, I killed many a skeleton. not work out again okay skeletal mage I haven't seen a skeletal mage before or maybe it was the skeletal archer that just shot Let's go see if we can cunning cunning action our way here back into stealth. Maybe not yet, but with the right angle I'm sure we can. A good kill, as they say. Oof, that was a high roll. I don't know if there's going to be more fights after this one, so let's not burn too much firepower. Okay, this guy can literally do nothing, so we'll just leave him there. spells with this guy offensively apart from the radiant one <clears throat> apart from guiding bolt i mean to say i'll get you yet oh what the hell i'm going to use my action surge get ah oh, damn it i was going to say you get action surge back after a short rest <clears throat> He rolled an 18 and he still missed. That's harsh. You can see where the armor class thing really comes in. Cunning hide. Okay, I moved him. Too far there. That's okay. Your regularly uh, your your regularly scheduled um, carpet bombing of the enemy will continue soon. Nice.
Just take it. Just take it. You'll be fine. Come on, buddy. Oh, killing me here. the bit where we end up getting taken down by skeletons. Nice! Oh wow, he's got a lot of health. I didn't realize that that enforcer was so tough. We could always leave if we need to go rest, go back to the cave, there's a campfire there. If the game lets us leave. Alright, he's back on his feet. Let's go, second wind. Let's butcher the archers before uh, before they keep rolling twenties at us and actually just kick kick our asses. Ha ha! Hoo -hoo. I don't know what that skeleton there is. I'm gonna marked as unknown creature, so we've never seen it before. Should be able to pick off the. Uh... Oh, that's just a normal skeleton. He's just stood there. That's the archer. Yeah, he's got a lot of HP, so we should probably carve this guy up. The sooner he's dead, I can pull out my longbow and start firing at the, uh, what can only presume is a skeletal mage. A little light is always well. <laughs> oh! No point in swapping to my bow right now because uh, I can just tank the damage for first before firing. <clears throat> There's always a trick in D and D games where you can fast swap, which is really there was a really cheesy cheesy trick where you had two shields, and what you would do is you would swap to your you would fire your bow, <clears throat> then swap to two shields. And then on the next turn, you would have your shields out. You would swap back to your bow and fire. <clears throat> and then you swap back to your shields again on the next turn. And what that does is, uh, it, you know, it means that for at least one turn, you are a lot harder to hit and damage. Go 
according to this, I don't have a shot. Which is confusing, because that looks very clean, shot-wise. So why that's not a shot, I have no clue. So I'm pretty sure that the old crossbow here has got 24 tiles of range. 64 tiles of range, in fact. 64 tiles of range. That's well in range. But for whatever reason, I can't hit him. turn before I can do any sort of cunning cunning dashing immune to magic missile anti-shielded so we might as well get on the front line for now. Let's try this. Okay, he's not got the most HP in the universe. Ah, oh, but he, res he resists bow. He's immune to magic missile, apparently. <clears throat> Fireballs it is. Good. Did that just do one damage? Oh man, that's sad. Now I wish I'd empowered it. <laughs> Archer's plugging away at me. I should probably do something Only about him. Only the last blow matters. <clears throat> okay, six damage. Critical hit. Still not helpful. Finally rolling for advantage behind cover. Wow, this is the most difficulty I've ever had with a group of skeletons. That's for sure. There's actually cover here, so what we'll do is we'll just get behind cover. 
<laughs> I hope that still counts. So he's somehow floating above the cover. Wow, that didn't help, did it? Does that mean... Is he still immune to magic missile after using a shield? Yes. Alright, I just wanted to understand that mechanic. Keep firing. Death reaches out for you. <laughs> He's already dead, mate. Once again, the rogue is going to be our old reliable DPS. Round ten, fight! Oh. Oof. Come on, one hit. That's all I need. Another victory. Okay, alright. Now I can go after the archer. I just figured I'd done so much damage to the, uh... I'd done so much damage to the, uh, skeletal necromancer. That I might as well finish the job on him. In fact, I probably should have fired magic missile at it. Not bad, eh? But anyway, it's dealt with. Okay, that just leaves this guy who I don't know if he's deliberately set to just not move. <clears throat> Maybe to stop you from closing in. But either way, him just sitting there is going to uh, be a disadvantage now. Oof! Stick attack! <laughs> One! So sad. <clears throat> I'm like, there's no point in using meta magic on a fireball. You hardly ever roll one. Rolls one twice. Okay, he will save that. Tried to conserve my magic, thinking that this would be an easy fight. But the skeletal mage made it a lot less of an easy fight. Oh, wrecked! Master, <laughs> I'm alive, or so it seems. Those are quite common in the marches. Just tell me there's something valuable down here. Oh, I think you'll be happy. Something valuable in the neighborhood. Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters. OK, 
Okay, we can leave at any time, so if we do run into another encounter, we could always just uh, head back and rest up before it. But that is it for now. We are out of time, truly out of time. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>